Anything thing in my teeth. I got that on the ear. Wait! <laughs> That's awful. I want to say that again so we can do the audio. Hello. No, what did you say? Do I have anything in my teeth? Yes. Um, Actually? No, you don't. <laughs> <laughs> Alright. <coughs> 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 Trying to make it be quiet before we start. Let's see. So, uh, thank you for participating in the study. Today we'll discuss the adoption of modern and alternative teaching methods such as gamification, spaced repetition, methods of loci, and associative learning in educational settings. Your insights are invaluable to understanding the challenges and opportunities in implementing these methods. There are no right or wrong answers, so please feel comfortable sharing your thoughts and experiences. Uh, first of all, starting with your uh, name and your age. Uh, my name is Josie Stilski, and I am currently 23 years old. So, uh, could you please share your role in education and your experience with innovative teaching methods? Um, so I'm currently a student at UND. I am a geology major. Uh, I'm a senior. Um, I would say in the geology program, there is not a lot of ways that innovative like teaching methods are being used because it's a science degree. And science is very, it's by the book. There's not really a whole lot of room to be different. Uh, I'm taking a language class that uses a little bit more of online ways to get kids engaged. They have people who are it's more definitely more blackboard focused, I would say. Oh uh, yeah. Um, <clears throat> following up on that, uh, in your opinion, what are the key characteristics that define effective teaching and learning in today's educational landscape? Um, I think it's important to have the teacher tailor it to individual students. It's very hard. You're going to get a classroom full of kids that all learn the same style. A lot, a lot of kids nowadays, especially after COVID, don't learn with the whole sit and lecturing style. So you kind of have to have a little bit more participation. Whether that be stuff like online games, like a hoot, or like Quizlet little quizzes, or stuff like that. So I think it's important to have the teacher kind of be aware of their students' needs. And um, <clears throat> onto your um, a little bit more of the background, what is your familiarity with modern teaching methods such as gamification, space repetition, methods of loci, and associative learning? So for <coughs> space repetition, I would say like anything with like it's kind of like Quizlet, having like flashcards and having things go over and over and over again. Especially with science, a lot of things are tied into each other so a lot of the classes kind of overlap or they'll say the same word over and over again through different powerpoints just because it's an important word you kind of have to know it for language class i would say it's more of a gamification with kahoot it's oh okay what does this word mean in this language oh yeah, everybody's racing to get the correct answer which gets kids more competitive more engaged wanting to learn more about the language because usually there's a prize for like extra credit or like candy at the end um could you describe any experiences you've had personally with these uh, methods or similar methods um sometimes myself i do use like quizlet for flashcards language it's very useful uh geology it's useful with like charts and knowing what uh like what you need to know i guess for like where the axis is on a fault or such stuff like that uh language i say it's more helpful especially because it's more of a creative part of your brain um so interacting with the gaming and having that competitive spirit with your fellow classmates makes you interact more with them which also kind of helps bring up the morale of the class um have you uh implemented any modern teaching uh, methods in your um educational uh path so, so I, you mentioned Quizlet. Mm -hmm. uh, have you have any had any other experiences with it? Um, I use like Duolingo and like Memrise.
for my language. I'm currently learning Norwegian, so I use Duolingo, which is spaced repetition. It goes over like five or six words every couple days, usually, depending on what unit you're on. So that's how it'll I say. Mostly spaced repetition, though. Uh, what motivated you to um, apply these methods, and what challenges did you face by using them? Um, I did some research on, it's very hard to learn a language, I think, from a book because you don't have someone pronouncing it for you. So that's why I think technology is good. So yeah, like Duolingo, um, Anki is really great for all languages that have like the characters. So like Japanese, Chinese, stuff like that. There's Memorize, a couple of ones that help with the pronunciation and space repetition. Some challenges are that sometimes the phrases can be very weird depending on what it is, or it might not always be correct because someone maybe missed something in like the final post. Or, yeah, so it might not be always accurate. And I know if you just solely use Duolingo, you won't be necessarily as fluent of a speaker. Uh, in your view, what are the main barriers to the wider adoption of innovative teaching techniques in educational settings? Uh, I would say mostly because people are very set in their ways. It's very hard to have an idea, kind of get motion. I know we're moving towards that more with after with COVID. Um, some schools gave out like computers for everybody to use so every kid could still do their homework. Not all schools have the funding to be able to do that though. Um, so yeah, I think it's important to be going in that direction, but it's not exactly easily attainable. Uh, how does resource limitations, institutional culture, or educator readiness play a role? Um, so like resource funding, you said? Uh, resource limitations, resource institutional limitations. culture, educator readiness. So for like resource limitations, schools don't have funding or necessarily like the teachers aren't necessarily well equipped to be able to teach that way. A lot of my professors are a lot older, especially in geology. They are not equipped to really handle technology age still. They've been trying their best, but it's not great. Um, for instance, like institutional culture um depending on the culture america is a very driven technology driven country but a lot of other countries around the world are not necessarily technology driven so it can be harder to get them more up to speed i would say um uh educator readiness educator readiness. um it's a big jump from textbooks and lectures to online and like computer stuff so a lot of teachers aren't ready for that or it takes them a long time and sometimes flat out they just don't understand it so i think it's important to be able to like teach the new professors and teachers now that are coming out of college to kind of use more easily accessible like modern teaching methods how do you perceive the potential impact of modern teaching methods on student engagement and learning outcome um i think it gets students engaged more Nobody wants to sit through a two hour lecture. It's important to have it like broken up into different sections. You can lecture for a little bit, that's fine. But you know, have like a Kahoot in there, you know, have like a question on the board. You try and get like students to answer it and stuff like that. And um, like uh, help facilitate like discussions amongst mm -hmm. your students, do like group work, stuff like that to get the other kids like talking to each other. Cause that's more important than just sitting in a lecture, staring at a screen. Uh, do you believe these methods can address diverse learning needs and styles more effect uh, effectively than traditional approaches? I think yes, because there's quite a few different learning styles. Some kids do learn well with lectures and textbooks. A lot of kids nowadays really don't. Um, so people, a lot of kids are more hands-on, so having activities would help. Some people are more social learners, so having peers to talk to and help bounce ideas off each other would help more. Just having a more diverse way you can see what also works for your students, I would say. Um, what are the common attitudes among your colleagues and your peers towards adopting new teaching methods? Is there a general openness, skepticism, or is the perspectives or the perspectives varied? For my colleagues, I would say most people my age, yes, modern technology would be or modern teaching methods would be a good thing. However, also on the flip side, I would say it's also very hard to do that in a science where you have to look at the ground, in a sense. Um, 
you can go outside and lecture about something, but it's difficult to, we can't, I'm, we're in North Dakota, we can't go outside and look at like a fault or a beach, you know? So I think having some of it's still important, but I think having modern teaching methods would be pretty great. What kind of uh, support and resources do you believe are necessary to facilitate the adoption of modern teaching methods? Uh, more funding, just in general. Training is especially a big one. Having everybody actually, like all the professors coming out of college, getting their teaching license, mm -hmm. having them kind of taught more on the up-to-date mm -hmm. methods. Mm -hmm. Just because if you just have people learn with lectures and textbooks, like how they, that's how they teach it. Every teacher's gonna have their own different style. I think it's important to get them familiar with the technology just because a lot of kids nowadays are very familiar with technology. So I think it's important to have them kind of be more up to speed. Um, can you share any examples of successful integration of innovative teaching methods within your institution or others that you are aware of? Um, so again, the big one was for my Norwegian class that I took last semester, about like every week we would do a, a kahoot for extra credit points on like this week's lesson and so all of us who would know would get super excited because we get extra credit and you know you name name yourself after something norwegian someone was named milk just milk the word milk in norwegian you know and all oh, milk one milk one first place because they got 15 out of 15 questions you know and i kind of i actually know some of the kids in my norwegian class a lot better just from kind of you know, talking some smack during cahoots, you know, and hanging out, having a good time. And currently, my Norwegian professor this semester has activities where he'll put something up on the board. He'll be like, all right, all right, you guys come up and uh, you guys write stuff down now. You know, we're not going to sit here and listen to me for two hours. The class is two hours long, but it doesn't feel like two hours long because usually you're getting up, doing group work or writing on the board, you know, talking with your peers. So, yeah. Uh, what factors do you think contributed to the success of... Uh class uh learning languages is hard mm -hmm. you can't just learn a language by listening to a lecture or reading from a textbook i think it's especially important to try and speak it at the same time as well as bouncing it off like a peer also trying to learn it if you're learning a language at the same time with someone usually you guys can help push each other so i think it's important to have that kind of like camaraderie for like that class i would say Looking forward, what steps do you think need to be taken to overcome the barriers to adopting modern or alternative teaching methods in education? Um, I think just the educational like institutions as a whole will kind of need to agree on what they want to do. I'm assuming like some of, I'm sure like some of the random colleges out west or some of the random colleges out east want to stick with like lectures and textbooks, you know, or some of the schools that don't have as much funding can't necessarily have the multi-million dollar, you know, computers and stuff like that, or pay to have a teacher who's up to date on all that stuff, you know? So yeah. Is there anything else you'd like to share regarding your experiences, hopes, or concerns related to the use of modern teaching methods? Mm. No, I don't think so. In that case, thank you for sharing your insights. Your input is crucial for understanding the complexities of adopting modern teaching methods and will contribute significantly to our research. So thank you. Du det bra eller var det att sitta här och vara på intervju här så? Ja. Så det var gick det gick det bra eller hur det var lite vanskligt att sitta här och vara på intervju? It went fine. Did you want me to mention the geology?